Chapter 20, World Climate and Global Climate Change. The climate system. Climate is an aggregate of weather. It involves exchanges of energy and moisture that occur amongst the atmosphere, hydrosphere, solid earth, biosphere, and cryosphere. World climates. Every location is a distinctive climate. The most important elements in climate description are its temperature and its precipitation. Brings order to large quantities of information. It's the climate classification. Many climate classification systems have been devised. The Köppen classification of climates, but it's best known and most used system, uses mean monthly and annual values of temperature and precipitation. So it uses the average monthly um, temperature and precipitation and the annual um, highs and lows of, of temperature and precipitation. The Köppen classification of climates divides the world into climatic regions in a realistic way. The boundaries Köppen shows are largely based on the limits of certain plant associations. So let's look at vegetation as an indicator of climate. So five principal climate groups. We have our humid tropical, or A climates, our dry climates, which are B climates, our humid mid-latitude with mild winters, which are C climates, and a humid mid latitude with severe winters is our D climates, and our polar climates are our E's. So A, C, D, and E classifications are defined on the basis of temperature characteristics. Precipitation, though, is the primary criterion for the B group, okay, the dry group. Okay, so, so our A's, there are humid tropical, see a lot of um, South America and, and Caribbean is uh, wet tropicals. Okay. And our dry regions are desert regions. Okay, the Rain Shadow Desert on the eastern side of these mountains and the eastern side of these mountains. Our humid mid latitudes. We have this, so right here's our humid mid latitudes. We're right, we're right on this line, right between this tropical uh, humid and, and the humid mid latitudes is right where we are. So change in the climate zone there. Okay, and then our um, polar ones are. In the polar regions. The highlands are very high in mountains. Okay, okay here's more of a um, more complete chart rather than a map. So the tropical uh, wet is our AF, or AM is our tropical monsoon, AW is tropical savanna. So, and then um, our dry desert climates, our subtropical desert, mid latitude desert. Okay. And we have our sea mid-latitude climates, like our Mediterranean on the west coast, and our humid subtropical, like just north of Palmage Gardens, um, marine west coast, so like, like Oregon and Washington. Okay, and so Arctic climates, our humid continentals, our tundras, and our ice caps. So our humid tropical A climates are winterless climates with all months having an average temperature above 18 degrees Celsius, which I'm thinking is about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Two main types, the wet tropics with high temperatures and year-round rainfall, luxurious vegetation, the tropical rainforest, discontinuous belt astride the equator, strongly influenced by the equatorial low pressures. Tropical wet dry, which is a climate type we're very familiar with, all world word of the wet tropics and the equator word of the tropical deserts, tropical grassland savannas and seasonal rainfall. So we have a wet season of rainfall and a dry season of less rainfall. Okay, so a comparison of some of the A climate types. So Iquitos, Peru has a fairly same temperature year round, not much variation. Precipitation, there's precipitation all year, not a lot of variation, but there's less in, in April and August for some reason. Okay, so this Iquitos, Peru is right here. Now, Monrovia, Liberia is over here, so temperature doesn't change a whole lot here either. But what's striking is that there's almost no rainfall in January, February, March, very low in December, and here's the nice strong wet season uh, in uh, April, May, June, July. Very much like this AM climate, it's very much like, like climate that uh, we have in Florida. Then Normanton, Australia has more change in temperature seasonally. Now they're south, south of the equator, so their winter is going to be where summer was. So these months here that are very dry are, and cooler are their winter months. And then they have high rainfall in their summer months. 
the dry bee climate's evaporation of water exceeds precipitation or exceeds the rainfall, so there's a constant water deficiency. Boundary determined by formulas involving the three variables, average annual precipitation, average annual temperature, and seasonal distribu distribution of precipitation. So two major bee climates, the arid or deserts, or BWs, and there are semi-arid or steppe or BSs. More, now the, the, the steppe climate is more humid than the arid climate surrounds the desert. It's kind of like a fringe zone. Causes of deserts and steppes? Well, in the low latitudes, for example, North Africa, northwestern India, northern to the northern Mexico, and southwestern United States are, are areas where we have these deserts. So here we have our Sahara, Arabian, um, here's this Gobi Desert. Okay, these seem to be very continental, so the rainfall is already out of the air before the air gets here, or they're right on the equator. Okay, here, rain shadow deserts. Okay. In the center of a continent. Okay. Causes of deserts and steppes in the low latitudes coincide with dry, stable, subsiding air and subtropical high pressure belts. Mid latitude deserts and steppes due to the position in the deep interiors of large land masses and or presence of high mountains. Most are located in the northern hemisphere. So there's comparison of some of the B types. So here's Cairo, Egypt. Some nice range of temperature. Okay, warmer in the summer. Um, very little rainfall year-round, like no rainfall in the summer, just a little bit in the winter. Here in Monterey, Mexico, much more variable temperature, a little more continental, a little, a little further from the water. Um, its rainfall is mostly more in the summer um, than in the winter. And let's say steppe climate, BS here, where this was a desert climate. And here's another desert climate. More dramatic changes in temperature here, and it's a little internal. Uh, United States, very low rainfall year-round. The humid mid-latitude climates with mild winters are sea climates. Okay, this is like climates just from just about or just a little north of us, all the way to Washington, D.C. Average temperature the coldest month is below 18 degrees Celsius, but above minus 3 degrees Celsius. Uh, subgroups, the humid subtropics, eastern side of continents, 25 to 40 degree latitude range. Hot, sultry summers, mild winters, winter precipitation is generated along fronts. The marine west coast is western, windward side continent, continents, 40 to 65 degrees north and south latitude, so that would be like Oregon and, and Washington for us, or England, Scotland, and Ireland, uh, from Europe. Uh, onshore flow of ocean air, mild winters and cool summers. You know, dry summers subtropics. West side of continents between 30 and 45 degrees latitude, strong winter rainfall max, often called the Mediterranean climate. So think of Southern California, think of uh, Italy. Okay, so here are some, some sea climate types in Guangzhou, China. Okay, um, it's a nice range of temperature, but most of the rain falls in the summer, a lot less rainfall in the winter. Uh, Sitka, Alaska. Uh, cooler temperatures because it's high latitude, but lots of rainfall, it's a lot of moisture coming up off that ocean. Okay, then Cape Town, South Africa, uh, not very variable in temperature, and of course more rainfall in their winter would be south of the equator. Humid mid-latitude climates with severe winters are D-climate, so think uh, New England. <laughs> Average temperature coldest month is below minus three degrees Celsius. The warmest month exceeds 10 degrees Celsius. Um, land controlled climates absent from the southern hemisphere. So not land mass. The humid continental subgroups confined to central and eastern portions of North America and Eurasia between 40 and 45 degrees north latitude. Severe winter and summer temperatures. High annual temperature ranges. Precipitation is greater in the summer than in the winter. S snow remains on the ground for extended periods of time. So the subarctic is north of the humid continental climate, often referred to as a taiga climate. Largest stretch of continuous forest on Earth. Source regions are of continental polar air masses. Frigid winters, remarkably warm but short summers. So, um, think, uh, think Alaska. Maybe. So here's Chicago. So here's our DFA climate. Extreme temperature change, hot summers, cold, cold winters, 
precipitation, fairly similar across the year. Now, Moose Factory, Ontario, very dramatic temperature differences. The very hot summers uh, relative to the very cold winters. The very hot summers, like 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, polar e climates, mean temperature, the warmest month is below 10 degrees Celsius. So the warmest month is below probably 32 degrees Fahrenheit over the course of the whole year. So enduring cold, meager precipitation, so very arid. Two types of polar climates, a tundra climate, ET, tree, is a treeless climate, almost exclusively in northern hemisphere, severe winters, cool summers, high annual temperature range, and the ice cap climate, EF, no monthly temperature above zero degrees Celsius, permanent ice and snow. Now the H is the highland climate, so usually cooler and wetter than adjacent lowlands, greater diversity of climate conditions, best described by terms of variety and changeability. Those highlands are usually fairly high in mountains. So here are some ET comparisons, or um, the E-type climate comparison. So our ET climate, Point Barrow, Alaska, with quite a temperature range, never really getting much over 30 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer, very little precipitation. Okay. The EF, here is Greenland, no precipitation, extremely arid, and extremely variable temperature. Okay, human impact and global climate. Humans have been modifying the environment for ex over extensive areas for thousands of years by using fires. Okay, using fire is not, not just burning things down, but using uh, forests for fuel. Also overgrazing of marginal lands. It means overgrazing of the lands bordering arid regions. Uh, most, most hypotheses of climate change are to some degree controversial, but uh, maybe we're moving away from the controversy at this point. Uh, global warming. Water vapor and carbon dioxide absorb heat and are largely responsible for the greenhouse effect of the atmosphere. Burning fossil fuels has added great quantities of carbon dioxide to our atmosphere, thus increasing our, our greenhouse effect. Energy consumption in the United States, the slides from 2008. So 2008, about 37% was from petroleum and 24% natural gas, 23% from coal. 9% nuclear power, but 7% renewable energy. Now those renewable energies, half was biomass, burning garbage, I guess. Uh, solar is 1%, hydroelectric 34%, 5% geothermal, and 7% wind. Now we probably have seen this piece of the pie um, grow larger. Uh, a lot of coal is being replaced by uh, renewable, um, and by solar has a bigger piece of the pie now, and wind has a bigger piece of the pie, and so geothermal hydroelectric. Um, since uh, 2008. Okay, um, atmospheric response to our human impact. Uh, global temperatures have increased. The balance of evidence suggests a human influence in global climate. Globally average surface temperatures projected to increase by 1.4 to 5.8 degrees Celsius by the year 2100. And the role of trace gases. Okay, so trace gases in the atmosphere like methane, methane nitrous oxide, and certain chlorofluorocarbon carbons. Um, uh, methane is a much stronger greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide, like maybe 32 times stronger maybe, uh, chlorofluorocarbons. Um, so um, that's greenhouse gas, but they also attack our ozone, the leader of our ozone layer. Average global temperatures, variations from 1860 to 2009 um, are um, temperature um, variation, um, let's see, so our, our temperature variation, we, our temperatures are averaging higher now than they were before, where these were lower, lower than average uh, temperature. The atmospheric response, the role of trace gases, they absorb wavelengths of outgoing earth radiation and then re- and then, then um, re-emit that radiation in a longer wavelength, warming up the air. Um, taking together the warming effects may be nearly as great as carbon dioxide. So as trace gases uh, can be important, an important factor in this. Climate feedback mechanisms. Possible outcomes of alternating climate system. There are two types. Positive feedback mechanisms reinforce the initial change to make things happen more faster. Negative feedback mechanisms produce results that are just the opposite of the initial change. You tend to offset it. 
some consequences. We have altered distribution of the world's water resources and the effect on the productivity of agricultural reasons. Uh, rainfalls will be more highly variable. Some places will get more rain and some places will get less rain than they're used to. Rising global mean sea, um, sea level as our polar ice um, um, melts, uh, sea levels are going to be rising. Um, also, the ocean water warming up makes it want to expand that also impacts sea level. Uh, changing weather patterns, higher frequency and intensity of hurricanes, shifts in the paths of large-scale cyclonic storms, changes in frequency and intensity of heat waves and, and droughts. There's more extreme weather. We have a southeastern Florida regional climate change compact. There's um, um, several counties and, and uh, municipalities are working together to try to figure out how to mitigate climate change. Uh, the town of Satellite Beach, which is probably about, I don't know, about uh, 95 miles north of here, they did a study on climate change impact for their town on uh, Barrier Island. If there was a two-foot sea level rise, 5% of the city would be underwater. A four-foot sea level rise, 25% city underwater. Six-foot sea level rise, 52% of the city underwater. Okay. The tipping point of catastrophic inundation is two feet by 2050. 